and we are live. Welcome everyone, Anthony here once again, and this time with a, uh, a more in-depth video about what I call the Hatchling Network, and uh, I'm gonna continue, the series will continue um, to be a live coding uh, of, the, of the Hatchling Network, and this video is gonna be a follow-up on the previous uh, video, where we actually were discussing why do we need uh, a decentralized network uh, for where NFTs are first-class citizens, uh, I was thinking about this the past couple of days on how could it work and I came up with a very nice idea and I want to show you guys uh, this uh, because I want to I want to I want to get a lot of feedback very fast it's very it's very important uh, so if you see this video please like this video uh, share this video uh, comment give feedback super important um, fast feedback loops is what makes software great right so the Hatchling Network, what is it? A decentralized network where NFTs are first-class citizens for trading, creating, selling, uh, placing auctions directly onto the blockchain without any VM, without any smart contract. Uh, so we can completely eliminate the issues that uh, smart contracts bring with them. Um, and that's uh, room for a lot of errors. And um, people are basically crying for something new. People are crying for a new way to interact with NFTs, a new way to trade them. And I know that there are a lot of new marketplaces being built, but they are all being built on the same pile of shit, right? They are all being built on the same protocol, all being built on the same VM, writing the same Solidity things. Uh, so uh, uh, again, room for error. Once again, once again, um, you're stepping in the same puddle of mud. Um, but maybe with different shoes. I don't know how to say it, but that's what it is. So we need something completely different. And the Hatchling Network is basically, it has this underlying blockchain, which is just a blockchain like we all know it. There is no crazy stuff around blockchain. Everybody knows how it works. Uh, it's going to have a, pr a proof of work where validators get a piece of the volume traded. That's what already is, is, is uh, what I already thought of. It's important because we need to have a lot of validators to strengthen the network and so on. But instead of having a VM, instead of writing smart contracts, we are going to interact with transactions directly into the blockchain because the blockchain will exactly understand what an NFT is, what a collection is, what an auction is and how an order book looks like and so on and so on. And I'm writing this in Golang. It's going to be insanely fast. Um, I'm, I'm basically... The previous episodes we were already coding this blockchain. I, I, I rewrote the whole, the whole, the whole shebang already. Uh, the past couple of days, um, making it super fast. There is no uh, encoding, decoding is going to be bare, bare metal. I'm, I'm going to use just a binary format uh, that I came up with myself. Just bare, bare metal. No reflection on go. It's going to be so fast. You have no clue. You have no clue how fast it's going to be. And uh, I will show you in the in, in future episodes for sure because I'm go gonna keep creating those episodes where I live code this network. Uh, no fancy white papers, uh, no promises. Um, just me coding this thing, uh, building, building. So, Hatchling Network. Why did I came up with uh, with that name Hatchling? Well, we are going to have a couple different parlance for this. Um, I know people are using terms like collections and, and minting NFTs and, and, and stuff. But on this network, we will call it uh, a nest. And a nest is basically a collection. So if you want to create a collection as an NFT creator and you want to create an NFT collection, you will need to create what I call a nest transaction. And a nest transaction is where you tell the blockchain, hey, my name, Anthony, I want to make a new collection. You let's let's open up let's let's just open up this uh, Nest transaction real quick, so I can show you um, Nest X for now. This is like I mentioned. This is not uh, things can change, right? Things can change. I'm I'm building along with, uh, alongside with my with my brain thinking, so it can change. So basically, we have a Nest transaction. You give it a little fee, uh, and you, it's important. People are asking for zero fees, but that's imp that's impossible. Nothing is for free in this world. We need a fee. We need a fee and we need to pay our validators. It, this fee is not for me. This fee is not. This fee is for the validators, right? It's, it's so important. Because if you don't pay your validators, they're going to peace out. And uh, then nobody is going to validate the network. And that's very important. So, <coughs> excuse me. 
a Nest transaction just consists out of uh, a fee with some metadata where you describe some things about your collection. Those standards are not made up yet. We don't, we don't know yet. It doesn't matter because metadata is just a generic slice of bytes. Uh, and you, as an owner, you sign this transaction, you sign this Nest transaction, where, you, where we know that you are the owner of that Nest. You put it onto the blockchain and it's all good. So that Nest is created. Enable to hatch NFTs, to mint NFTs, you need to do, you need to create a hatch transaction where you need to specify the following things. So you have that nest and now you want to hatch your 10k uh, ape collection, for example. Well, you need to create 10k of hatch transactions where you specify the fee, you specify the NFT crypto hash, which is basically the hash of the bytes of your NFT, right? So what is an NFT? Well, whatever you want it to be, right? I mean, right now, what is an NFT? It, it, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's an address on the, Ethereum, on the Ethereum blockchain. But what is that address? You agree, you believe that it's going to be your ape, which is a JPEG that exists somewhere. So that's the same, the same principle is here. But the hash of the NFT is basically, in this case, what I, what I would suggest is, to SHA whatever your NFT, the bytes of your NFT. So basically you have something that correlates directly uh, to the underlying asset, if, if uh, that's clear. So you give it a hash of, your, of, the, of the underlying bytes of your NFT. You also specify the nest. Because hatching, hatching NFTs into a nest can be done by the, by the creator of the nest itself but can also be done by other people with your approval. And that's very important because the hatchling network is going to be, is going to act as a, as a backend, as a backend, a decentralized backend for interacting with NFTs. So we, we are able to create, people are able to create marketplaces on top of this. Because we, we if, 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 you, if you're a technical expert or you have a good understanding of what you're doing, you can, basic, you can use uh, maybe some wallets uh, that, that's being created and able to communicate directly with the network. But there's a lot of people that don't have that technical ex uh, expertise. So I assume there are going to be built marketplaces on top of this thing. Uh, so like I mentioned, as an owner, you can hedge them, but you can also hedge them as... Um, I don't know, a marketplace, but you need the approval of the nest owner. So you give it the nest, you give it some metadata, and the metadata is basically what we already know, the threads of the NFT, and it's different for each NFT, so that's a generic thing. And that's for block explorers, or that's for the, the market, the front ends, what I call the front ends that's going to be built. Those are responsible to beautifully uh, layout uh, the metadata for the end user. And then very important, we specify uh, the nest owner and the signature. So the nest owner, if you are hatching an NFT into a nest, you need the approval of the nest owner. So the nest owner needs to sign your hatch, the, the, has, the nest owner needs to sign that transaction. So we can verify that if somebody is hatching, into a nest, into a specific nest, that there is a signature of that owner and they need to be verified. That's very important. And in that way, we can also distribute uh, royalties to the initial creator of the nest. So you need to see a nest as, as a safe haven, as a safe place, as a basket, like a bird creating a nest where it's going to safely place all his eggs inside of it and then those eggs are gonna are gonna hatch out and they're gonna be they're gonna be beautiful birds flying away into this savage world that's how you need to see a, a, a nest into the hatchling network yeah so 
what can we discuss more? Uh, of course, we're going to have other transaction types, for example, uh, transaction type auction, transaction type bits, and, and, and there are going to be a lot more transaction types out there, but I'm, I'm still thinking about them. And the first uh, transactions, what I'm going to implement are the nest and the hatch, because without any NFT on, on the network, we cannot trade, we cannot do auctions. So that's important. But the main understanding is that you directly communicate with the blockchain uh, by by sending it transactions so if you want to do an auction you will send it a transaction where you describe the price and 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 uh, how long it, it can be as an auction and so on and so on uh, yeah so all of these things are going to be embedded into the blockchain which eliminates a lot of room for error and i hope I hope people, because right now, uh, like people that having those apes, right? There are people uh, on Twitter that having a lot of apes, a lot of expensive, expensive NFTs, and those guys are shitting their pants. Those guys are shitting their pants if they need to trade. It's insane, or claiming, or whatever. It's such insane. It's you never know what's going to happen. It's a it's a surprise box. You never, never, never know. Um, even even if you're so carefully safe and, and and with your with your ledger and your and your keys it's still your your heart beats your heart beats 300 miles an hour if you're interacting with ethereum if you're interacting with one of these smart contracts and able to claim or, or, or trade an nft always so and, and instead that was for me and i'm not an ape owner i had a mutant i had a mutant but i already sold it i'm so sorry somebody somebody needs to pay for for these videos right so that's basically the concept. It's it's to be honest, it's very simple. You create a nest, and you hatch your NFTs into that nest, and that's it. That's basically it. Um, and then we have an order book, and you will create auctions, and and you can trade and sell that NFT. And um, yeah, that's basically it. it's very simple, but it's um, it's I think it's it's nice. So, short demonstration of what it's going to be, of course, is a lot of bits and bytes right now, and, and, and um, maybe for some people, hard to understand, but uh, if you have questions, please feel free to uh, put them in the comments or whatever on Twitter. Uh, I, will, I will be happy to resolve them as soon as possible. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in maybe one of the next uh, live coding sessions. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching, and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.